Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today we're here with Dr. Navid Sadozai, who is uh, a longtime polio eradicator, uh, a, a very senior epidemiologist and public health expert who has been uh, in, in this program for many years. Navid, how long and where all have you, have you worked? Well, thank you for uh, inviting me here. Oliver, uh, I worked uh, for 29 years in the United Nations, first 10 years in UNICEF. I was based in Pakistan. And then since then with WHO. But uh, polio experience started from 1994 when we did the first round of National Immunization Days in UNICEF, well, while I was in UNICEF Pakistan. So this was done in Pakistan. And since then I have been engaged with polio. In 1998 I left UNICEF and went as the first polio team leader for South Sudan. Had to set up a whole setup and a, and a team. And then later on went as the first polio team leader in Afghanistan, stayed there for six and a half years, three years during the Taliban period and three and a half years post-Taliban with some very interesting experiences. And then since uh, for the past uh, 12 years before I took retirement a few months back, I've been at the headquarters and then really going, taking care of the Indonesian outbreak first, then being the focal person for Nigeria, focal person for Pakistan and Afghanistan for times and then taking care of a few outbreaks in the Central Asian states and elsewhere. So that has been uh, quite an interesting, busy period and I've enjoyed uh, every bit of it. You've, uh, you've worked practically everywhere uh, and, and you've yeah. probably seen it all. You probably know more about uh, this uh, than, than virtually anyone. What, in your opinion, are some of the main challenges to reaching children with, with polio vaccine? I think the challenges are enormous, but some of the other the teams have been able to negotiate and and address most of these challenges. However, what's important to understand is that the challenges remain at different levels. So you need to address all the levels correctly. That means from the top, getting the political commitment, taking it down to the lower level for the administrative, at the administrative level for the commitment at that level, and then really making sure that your teams really understand the significance of what they're doing and are appreciated for their work. But most importantly, how do you engage the communities? And that's where some of the challenges have really been the toughest, where despite all your good work, some pockets of may not be doing or may not be that accepting of the vaccine or work may not be that as good as you would want to interrupt transmission completely. It's an eradication program, so you need to reach every pocket. It has to be homogeneously high level. And that's where some interesting experiences at times come. I've been very fortunate to be working uh, in different scenarios, in different areas, Africa, Asia, even European region. And uh, I've come across some challenges and uh, have been able to negotiate quite a few of them. I, I bet. Uh, tell us about some of those challenges, particularly at the community level. Yeah. Uh, so, well, let me just, so I can recall one interesting one maybe to share with uh, all of you, it was in Afghanistan. And this was just post-Taliban. So we were, um, I was along with uh, two other internationals. One of them now is a senior member of WHO. Uh, I have retired, the other one probably is retiring soon too. So we were going from Kabul to Gardez, that's about two and a half hours. And um, I saw about 10 or 12 camps of the nomads, which, we, which are called Kuchis in Afghanistan. And um, you cannot just turn, get off the road in this, this part of the world because it's heavily mined. Uh, so you have to check if there were fresh tire marks and we could see the fresh tire marks in that dirt road. So we, we went there, we had two cars. I was sitting with the international staff and we had the local staff following us in the other car. So we went and stopped and in this Kuchi camps you don't never get off because their dogs um, are the largest dogs I've ever seen in my life. They oh. almost from a distance, they look like a donkey. So you better be careful. And they don't bark, they don't give you any, any they don't alert you. They have marked their areas, obviously we can't sniff it. So it's better to just pulled down the window and called for them. So this young man in his maybe late 20s came up to the car and this uh, local staff member from the other car started asking him if the children, if the teams were there. And he said, yes, the teams, polio teams did come. So he said, 
what about your children? Are they immunized? He said, no, I didn't allow them to immunize the children. And he said, but why? He said, well, well I don't see the, any reason, any logic for it because I've never been immunized and I'm perfectly fine. So he said, but this is important. And he was trying to explain it from epidemiological point of view, from medical point of view. And this guy was not buying it. And then he said, hey, stop. My father is older than you. He's still f fitter than you. He has taken the entire herd to the mountains of Bamiyan, which is the Hindu Kush mountains. And uh, he never got immunized. So why would I expose my children to something that I don't feel any reason to, that it's going to be helpful to them? He still continued telling him and then he started telling him about the virus and you cannot see it and I could see that this guy had completely lost it. He thought this guy was crazy or whatever. And then I got off. I said, can I come out? He said, yes, you can come out. I told the other gentleman to go and sit in the car. I said, do you see? I, I spoke the languages, which was a big advantage. Yeah. So I spoke in his local dialect and I said, do you see two foreigners with me? He said, yes. I said, these are my guests. I need to buy a lamb to sacrifice for them to prepare a feast. He said, sure. So I said, can do you have some lambs left or is are all gone for grazing? He said, no, we have a few left. And I was hoping and knowing the culture that most of the time the lambs which are left behind are the ones who, which are either sick, very young, or maybe would have lost a limb or something, which would not be able to do, make all that travel. So I was hoping and I said, why don't you take me and I'll choose one. So he took me to this, this tent and uh, there were lambs and then luckily, says luck would favor you sometimes. There was an emaciated one with a bad leg. So I said, I want this. And he said, no, no, but why don't you take this better one? This, this is a much healthier one, fatter one for a better feast. So I looked at him and said, say, I'm much older to you. I've been making a feast since a long, long time before you were born. Then I gave a pause. I said, but, and also my father has been doing the same. My grandfather has been doing the same. So I looked at him. He got the idea. So he said, I said, don't you think if I have to buy a lamb, the wise thing for me would be to get your advice because you know it better than I do. He said, yes. I said, similarly, I'm a health person. If there's a health reason, you don't argue. You take my advice. That's the wise thing to do. So what do we do? He got all the children for those 12 tents. We immunized everyone. I think that's fantastic. What a fantastic uh, story. Mm -hmm. uh, you really, it, it shows you can't just be a medical doctor. You need to be a, a sociologist, yes. an anthropologist, a yes. psychologist to um, really, really be able to reach all, uh, all the children. I, I think you need to be a communicator because what's important is you need to get down to the level of the person to be able to, to, to talk to them. It's very important to respect them. It's not, it's, it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a gradient yeah. at, level, at any level because nobody, they're all, for me in any case, personally I've never felt literacy and illiteracy is a very relative term. I'm completely illiterate if you leave me in his place. I'll probably kill all the herd in a few weeks and would not be able to survive. So we all have our own expertise. So you need to respect people. If you get down to that level, instead of telling them things that you think are scientifically correct, but this guy was had no idea what we were talking about, but at his level, that plain logic probably worked. I, I thank you so much for, for sharing this experience and uh, most importantly, thank you for all the fantastic work you've done over the past 20, 20 years. Uh, I can't think of, of very many people who have done uh, more than you have for polio eradication. Uh, you mentioned you recently retired. It's, it's so well deserved. We wish you all the best, but we're still glad that you're still here and still doing eradication work. Navid, thank, thank you, you very much. much. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.